Hi, it's Paul here from selfoutforlife.com and in today's video I'm going to talk about how to stop being lazy. Now January 2019 has been a fairly lazy month for me. It's been a bit hard to get focused and motivated. I was on holiday for a couple of weeks over Christmas and sort of lost a bit of the momentum and just trying to get back into that now. Also in Australia it's the holiday season, the kids are off school. Um, so what I tend to do, if there's something I'm struggling a bit in my own life, I make it my personal development focus and I do a bit of research and apply different strategies to help me. And often it becomes the focus of my videos as well. And I also thought that if I'm struggling a bit with laziness, then maybe you are too, because we're all human at the end of the day. So I've identified three different types of laziness. The first one is what I call long-term laziness. So this could be someone that maybe they lost their job 12 months ago and they're doing nothing or very little to resolve that situation. Or someone's gaining weight and they're doing nothing or very little to solve it. Or it could be someone that's at university but they're not studying, they're partying instead. And it's almost like the person is just like not thinking about the problem, they're kind of hiding the problem in some way. And they probably don't feel too bad about it either. They're probably actually quite enjoying themselves maybe. Um, but it could be quite unconscious. As I say, there's ne less negative feelings about it. Okay, now the second type is short-term laziness. This is where someone that is normally very successful, ambitious, overachiever type personality traits, um, and they're in a bit of a rut. So they're normally highly motivated, but they're in a rut. They've lost their drive, lost their motivation, and things that they're normally motivated to do, they're not motivated to do. Okay, so, and with this kind of person, they're going to be having thoughts about wasting time, not achieving things. They may be mentally beating themselves out. So they're going to be feeling more negative emotions as well, frustration, and it's going to be much more conscious to the person, maybe some feelings of guilt as well in there. And then the third type is what I call situational laziness. So this is when you're highly motivated to do some things, but not others. So for example, you might be very motivated for your work or your career, but not about doing exercise, okay? And this is really around just having different priorities, things that you see more important in life. And this can be almost linked to a kind of all or nothing type thinking, where you put all your effort into one aspect of your life, like your career, um, and then you ignore other parts of your life as well. And I suppose really situational laziness is almost the combination of long-term and short-term laziness, but just applying it to certain situations. Okay, and I know for me, I tend to put my focus into my business and my career, and I'm not so good at putting focus into exercise, but that's something I'm going to work on in 2019 to try to get a bit more of a balance. Okay, so before you start looking at ways to overcome laziness, it's good to just go through a bit of a laziness checklist, okay, by asking yourself some questions. So the first question is, are you burnt out? And one way to ask this question is, have you had a holiday in the last six months or a bit of time off? So if you haven't, then you probably are a bit burnt out and you just need a break, okay? Secondly, are you physically tired? Uh, I know that when I'm physically tired or maybe if I'm going down with something, it's very, very much harder to be motivated, okay? Is your life out of balance? You know, if you're someone like myself, I value social interaction a lot, being out with people, um, so if I spend all day on the computer at home, not talking to anyone, then I'm going to feel a bit out of balance. Um, the opposite could be true as well. If I'm out five nights a week socialising, I'll then by that time be craving some time alone. Okay, so we all have different human needs and it's important that we get a balance of those different human needs. And I've done a video on uh, the main human needs, so I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And also, if you're just doing too much of the same thing, it may be that you just need a break. Okay, so um, before we talk about ways to stop being lazy, let's just quickly uh, talk about the two different types of motivation. So you can be motivated either in a negative or away from way, and that's when you're focusing on the pain of not doing something. Okay, so you're focusing on losing weight or exercising because you don't want to be ill later in life um, or you don't want that kind of pain, okay? 
Um, or it could be you're focusing on meeting someone because you don't want the pain of being lonely. OK, so it's an away from motivation. Now, that can be very useful away from or negative motivation. But one of the problems of that is that it can wane over time. So as you start to achieve some success, that motivation drops and then you start to maybe go back into bad habits again. OK, um, positive or towards motivation. So this is more like visualizing the good, the positive things that will happen when the goal is achieved. That's more sustainable long term. So a good way to be more motivated and not be lazy is to just focus and maybe write down more reasons for doing whatever it is that you're procrastinating on. OK, and if you can get enough good reasons to do anything, then that will give you the motivation and help you overcome the lazy feeling. OK, so let's look now at some specific ways to stop being lazy. So a great way is to be accountable to somebody else. So um, it could be a personal trainer. Uh, I know in the past when I had a personal trainer and also when I had a piano teacher at school, I was always doing regular practice uh, in between sessions because I was accountable to that person. Um, also, you know, deadlines or homework, you know, I, I hated to miss deadlines of that nature. So that was always made me accountable as well. Um, you can also be accountable to a good friend or to a coach, to a life coach. And another good way as well is to uh, do what I call pay up. So let's say you've got a habit such as let's say drinking coffee as an example. OK, you want to stop drinking coffee. OK, so you could say to a close friend that if I have a cup of coffee, I'm going to give you ten dollars, something like that, or I'm going to give this to a charity. OK, so basically you're committing to someone else that if you do this habit, you're going to um, yeah, you're going to pay up and that's going to be uncomfortable for you because that's money you could spend on something else. Or you could do a bet with a friend, OK, based on achieving some kind of goal. So accountability is really, really important and is a great way to help you stay motivated and not be lazy. OK, the second one is to act before you think. So typically the way we think is that we have a thought that then generates some kind of feeling that then generates a behavior. So a, a TFB loop, as I call it. OK, however, it also works the other way around. You can act. I have a behavior that will then generate a feeling. And then that would then uh, allow your thoughts to change. OK, so it's almost like the idea of faking it until you're making it or acting as if. So to give you an example of this, uh, when I was a kid at school. In swimming lessons, we uh, one of the things that we needed to do was to jump off the two meter board into the deep end of the pool. Now I could swim, but I had a fear of jumping out of my depth. So I was on the two meter board thinking about it and ruminating over it. And the more I thought about it, the harder it got. And, and I ended up not doing it. OK. Um, and if you think about any kind of fear, like if you're going to do a parachute jump or a, or a skydiving, something like that, the longer you think about jumping off that plane, the harder it's going to be to do it. OK. So in this case, just acting, just doing it. Um, is going to be a much better thing. It's going to be a much less fear involved in that than than procrastinating and thinking about it. OK, so act, then you get the feeling you want and then you get the thought. OK, so just acting and just doing it. OK, and I've found also that if you do something, you then begin to feel like doing it. So rather than waiting until you feel like doing it, do it anyway and the feeling will soon come. OK, the next one is to do whatever it is for five minutes. And this really, really works, or it does for me anyway. So you do whatever it is and two things are going to happen. One is you're going to keep doing it and that's normally what's going to happen. Or after five minutes, you're going to stop. And that's an indication that you generally do need a break. You do need to take some time out. Um, I did this one a lot um, when I was younger, when I was playing the French horn. Um, I loved playing in orchestras and probably partly because I enjoyed the social interaction as, as part of that. But I hated practicing on my own, really didn't enjoy that. But what I often found was if I practiced for five or ten minutes, I would then keep going for an hour just because once I got into it, it didn't seem as bad and I'd actually enjoy it. Um, so that's a really good one as well. Now, the next one is similar to the previous one, except that rather than doing five minutes, you do half the activity. OK, so let's say that every morning you have some kind of morning routine or morning ritual, which normally takes an hour. So instead, you do 30 minutes of it. 
okay? Or maybe you normally exercise for 45 minutes, so instead you do just over 20 minutes. Um, or you do something to half your normal standard, okay? So if you're a bit of a perfectionist, let's say that um, I'm gonna write a blog post, okay? So I do it to half my normal standard, okay? Um, so that's how you do it, and then you can always prove on it later on, but you just, what that does is it takes the pressure off you. You will actually end up probably doing it close to your normal standard, but it just takes the pressure off you. Okay, the next one is to make distractions harder. So if there's things that distract you, particularly things on the computer, then turn them off. So turn off like social media notifications, or you can use software to block certain websites that you often want to go to um, that you find that distract you. So that can be a good one as well. Um, or you can make the thing that you want to do easier. So if it's exercising first thing in the morning, have your clothes ready the night before, okay? Or if it's uh, you're procrastinating on work or business activities, create your to-do list the day before. So as soon as you get up and you're ready to work, you can just get straight into the first task. Okay, the next one is to shift your identity around laziness, okay? So instead of thinking that I'm a lazy person, okay, you could change that to, I'm, I'm a normal person who sometimes feels a little bit lazy or feels like taking a break, okay? And again, watch out when you're speaking with other people. So don't say I'm a lazy person because your unconscious mind's gonna pick up on that. It becomes like a negative affirmation in a way. So think about what you could say instead, okay? And also change your internal self-talk around laziness as well. You know, rather than being part of your identity, it's just something that you do sometimes, okay? Laziness is just something you do. It's a very small part of your personality. Uh, another one, and this is one that um, certainly I've, uh, done quite a lot in the past is to set less goals. So if that laziness is coming from a sense of feeling overwhelmed, feeling that there's just too much to do and you don't know where to start, then maybe you've underestimated the amount of time and effort required to achieve whatever goals you've set for yourself, okay? So I've been finding that every month I set myself monthly goals and I'm noticing that I'm setting less goals each month, um, but I'm starting to achieve more of them now. So I'm getting into, so I'm really setting myself up for success um, by setting reasonable goals and then feeling confident in my ability to achieve them. And I suppose if you feel confident as well, then you're less likely to be lazy. And then the last one is to set rewards for achievement, okay? So small rewards or big rewards dependent on the task. Um, it gives you something to look forward to when you've completed the task. Um, so that's important as well. And remember that what gets rewarded gets repeated. Okay, so we are to some degree conditioned to focus on rewards and it definitely helps you feel more fulfilled and satisfied with whatever you've achieved as well. So set yourself a little rewards, make sure those rewards are dependent on the task. If it's a big task, it could be a night out, uh, night out with your partner or with friends. You know, for a small little task, it could be just a little treat uh, or just spending 10 minutes just blindly surfing the internet or looking at videos on YouTube, just something like that. Okay. So these are my ideas on how to stop you being lazy. I hope you found them useful. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please like the video, give it a thumbs up, and do subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and click the bell notification so you're notified whenever I release new videos. If you haven't already, do check out my website, which is selfhelpforlife.com. On my website, you will see the written versions to most of these videos, and also a link to my podcast and also to social media as well. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I look forward to sharing more great content with you very soon. Bye for now.